Maybe that was his final statement. Suicide, death by hanging, what some would argue the most selfish act that a man or a woman could take, and maybe some others of you would argue, maybe arguably a very heroic act in a way, that last statement. I'm, I'm trying to grasp for, for, for words. A courageous act is probably a better term. But you really don't know who Robin Williams was. Only he, at the end of the day, really knew who he was. And obviously he felt disconnected from the world and his fans that say they care about him if he was going to kill himself. You know, they say that he had money problems towards the tail end. I didn't know that. I learned that today. Robin Williams committed suicide by hanging himself with a belt. Marin County Police said at a Tuesday press conference, the preliminary cause of death is suicide due to asphyxia. This is according to Keith Boyd, lieutenant, told the media. According to Boyd, Williams' assistant found him hanging in a bedroom, slightly suspended in a seated position with superficial cut marks on the inside of his left wrist. Rigor mortis had already set in. He was pronounced dead tragically at 12.02 p.m. on Monday. Williams was last seen alive by his wife at approximately 10.30 p.m. on Sunday. Boyd added before she went to bed. So he was discovered by his assistant. You know, all the great, wonderful films that Robin Williams made, many favorites that you might have that I'd like to hear that you can put in the comments right now live. Mrs. Doubtfire, one of his great comedic tributes where I would agree with the assessment that Robin Williams, according to Steven Spielberg, really was and used to be and was the lightning rod of comedic genius, truly a genius who battled depression, severe depression, also alcohol addiction and cocaine addiction, who made light of it in his comedic stand-up routines that many of you are familiar with. The other movies, 1989, Dead Poet Society, 1997, Goodwill Hunting, proving that he can do both drama effectively and also comedy. Jumanji, What Dreams May Come, Hook, Good Morning Vietnam, Jack, one of my personal favorites put out in 1999, Bicentennial Man, where a lot of what's happening now in the real world with the Google algorithm and the merger of man and machine and this transformation of human beings and what it means to be a man and or a woman with the machine. This transhumanism explored in Bicentennial Man where Robin Williams and was much of the theme it was much promoted in the film. There was a big activism and push for machines to be recognized with the same rights and freedoms as regular Americans or, or regular human beings had. All of this explored in and in these beautiful pieces that made up the history of films. Four films actually still set to come out that Robin Williams had filmed before his tragic death. You know, TMZ's all over it. CNN's all over it. CNBC, MSNBC, Bloomberg's all over it, capitalizing on the 24-48 hour news cycle that makes up Robin Williams' death, pretending like they care when they don't. Because the reality is they'll be off and running to the next story tomorrow. So I don't think that we should pretend to really care. We might think it's tragic, but none of us, unless you're an immediate family member or friend, knew Robin Williams personally. And that's the point that I was trying to make, and I think that's the point that we should make. You know, America is full of its own shit. We're full of our own bullshit. Again, as George Carlin said, it's a big freaking feel-good circle jerk, and that's all it is. George Carlin also said once that freedom we're not really free here in the United States of America. What we have are temporary privileges. And all you need to know to prove that is see what was done to the Japanese Americans in World War II after they were sent to concentration camps via executive order by then-time President Franklin Delano Roosevelt to prove that point. So although absolutely tragic, that is the truth about Robin Williams, folks. And it's just a news blip. It's just a part of the 24-48 hour scam job and news rotation that makes up Entertainment Weekly, E! Tonight, TMZ, and CNN. And after they're done hashing and rehashing and 
talking about this suicide and this tragedy, they'll be done with it. Never to be spoken of again. His films will be the only element left and the only legacy that he leaves outside of his own personal intimate legacy that you and I will never know. And we can't pretend to understand. According to Fox, Robin Williams, worried about faltering career, struggled with survivor's guilt, sources say. Could that perhaps been a motivation and a reason in addition to the depression and his faltering career and or money problems that drove him to this stark reality, to the end game that made up his last moments and his last breath. And to just point out and to show you, to give you an example of just how ridiculous this is and to just prove the point is now Amazon is exploding with sales of Robin Williams memorabilia and films and instant downloads. All of this just one big marketing last ditch effort around Robin Williams to make more money for the Hollywood elite which is exactly what they are. Again, do these people really care? Do they really give a shit about this person? Or is he just being marginalized and hoard out and used by these institutions that make up America today, that make up Hollywood and the entertainment industry. Again, all of this blasted across the headlines. Robin Williams hangs himself, the sheriff says. Preliminary details revealed. You know, looking through some of the comments in the video today, most of which our audience is in agreement with. And again, proving the point, this video much more popular than anything I've ever put out. At least it appears at this rate, at this virality, than anything I would have to say about the president in these anti-constitutional wars, in this anti-congressional approach to deciding as a dictator to engage independent sovereign nations overseas. Again, where are all the critics? Where is the Bill Mars of the world, the big abominoid freaks, the big supporters that supported him in 2008 in his anti-George W. Bush and anti-war rhetoric and anti-Iraq rhetoric? Where are these people now defending themselves? And the reason you're not hearing from them, the reason you only hear crickets today is because they can't defend themselves. All these people realize that they were conned by the biggest con man in the history of the world. That the president today, Barack Hussein Obama, is no different from George W. Bush, I would argue worse. Again, at least Bush sought and respected our constitutional government. At least he sought approval from our branches of government, our representative leadership before killing and murdering people overseas. And the mainstream media wants to pitch this as targeted. They want to pitch this as limited airstrikes. They want to massage the turd and make it all fluffy and real pretty. But at the end of the day, this is murder, folks. This is killing overseas. And there's nothing pretty about any of it. This is the reality while the president golfs, the world burns. But Americans don't really care what they pretend to care about as they circle jerk and stroke themselves off is the American gangbang that makes up the Robin Williams suicide scandal.